Well, next week in Destiny is looking like a good one with Iron Banner coming back, as well as continuing our journey with Grandmaster Nightfalls, plus the chance to earn some great new adept loot in the game. So today I'm going to run through all the info we have about next week in Destiny 2, so you can plan your time and decide what content you want to check out from the 12th until the 19th of April 2022. Well, if you're new around here or find this useful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below for all the latest Destiny 2 content and turn on notifications by hitting that bell. And roughly 98% of viewers who watch this week in video games aren't subscribed, so subscribe today and never miss an update. Also, I am testing out this new series called Next Week in Destiny 2, so I'd love your feedback and let me know what you think down in the comments and also any improvements too. Well, first of all, let's have a look at the highlights for Next Week in Destiny 2. So Iron Banner is returning, plus we've got some teaser info about the Iron Banner rework coming from Bungie. We've got the Arms Dealer Nightfall returning. New seasonal challenges for Week 8 in Season of the Risen. We've got Crucible updates including the new rotating playlist and also no Trials of Osiris next weekend. Also we've got the Eververse Bright Dust items and a brand new free cool looking emblem to get and that is available for everybody. Well, first of all, let's have a look at Iron Banner returning. So, Lord Saladin returns to the tower on the 12th of April 2022 for the second Iron Banner of Season of the Risen. So, don't forget to pick up all the bounties as they're a great source of pinnacle loot, which is really going to help you level up for the season and get near that pinnacle cap. So, that's especially good if you want to jump into those Grandmaster Nightfalls. Well, Lord Saladin has an introduction quest called What We Survive. This is a good quest as you get a couple of new Iron Banner weapons including the Frontier's Cry and the Razor's Edge. So the Iron Forerunner armor set is available to us this season, plus Bungie's added this perk called Iron Lord's Pride. So you wear a piece of that armor and it grants a small chance of Enhancement Prism dropping at the end of the Iron Banner match. So Iron Banner is a really good source for not only good loot and great weapons this season, but also a good source of prisms and also rank up materials too. Well, here's a look at some of the great loot to check out with Iron Banner next week. So we've got Frontier's Cry. That is a great hand cannon. We've got the Razor's Edge. That's an excellent sword. We've got the Peace Bond. That is a really, really good stasis kinetic sidearm. Really, really good, that one. And of course, the Reese Walker. That is a very, very popular shotgun in Crucible. Well, Bungie also had an update in the latest this week at Bungie this week, talking about Iron Banner. And they said the following. So looking to next week, Iron Banner returns. And while we're planning a larger This Week at Bungie to cover the upcoming changes, one of our pieces of advice this week is to spend your Iron Banner tokens, complete your Iron Banner quest, and redeem your Iron Banner bounties. We've got some updates to Saladin and how he's going to be dishing out rewards, which naturally leads to the retirement of Iron Banner tokens and bounties. So you have two Iron Banner weeks left to spend these tokens for rewards, including next week, so make sure you plan some time in the tower to turn them in before the end of the final Iron Banner this season. Oh, and a small update from the team, we're looking to prevent the abilities bounty for our final Iron Banner before next season, so we've heard and felt the feedback that could be a little bit time consuming, so we're shifting our focus on objective and weapon bounties for the remainder of the season, so happy hunting. Well that is really really good news and definitely looking forward to that Iron Banner rework next season. But let's jump into what else we've got next week in Destiny 2, so we've got Nightfalls, so next week we've got the Arms Dealer as the Nightfall and the Grandmaster Nightfall on the EDZ. This is a classic strike from the original Destiny 2 back in 2017, and it's aged pretty well to be honest. It's one of the faster Nightfalls of the season, especially when compared to the two new Nightfall strikes we have from the Witch Queen. So the Nightfall weapon next week is the Duty Bound, and the Duty Bound is a legendary kinetic auto rifle, and that one has an adaptive frame, meaning it's got wear and a grip, it's reliable and it's sturdy. For PvE, you want Corkscrew Rifling, Tactical Mag, Triple Tap, and Frenzy. That would be a decent roll. So the Corkscrew Rifling got slightly increased his range and stability and slightly increased the handling speed. Tactical Mag increases stability, increases reload speed, and slightly increases magazine size. Triple Tap, so rapidly landing precision hits will return one round to the magazine. And Frenzy, so being in combat for an extended period of time, increases damage, handling, and reload. For the weapon until you're out of combat. I think the Duty Bound is a really, really good PvE weapon myself, but you can get one for PvP too. So Corkscrew Rifling, Acronized Rounds, Triple Tap, and Dynamic Sway Reduction would be really, really good. So we've been through most of those. Other than Acronized Rounds, that increases range, and Dynamic Sway Reduction, of course, 
improves the accuracy and stability while continuously holding down the trigger. Bungie also noted in their latest This Week at Bungie update a small note about Grandmaster Nightfalls. So they said we got a slight clarification on some patch notes from the launch dealing with acute burns. So in Destiny 2 update 4.0.0.1, it was incorrectly noted that these burns would not be present in Grandmaster difficulty. So acute burns are intentional and replace the unique strike modifiers. So small burns plus extra knockback or splash damage. And the new seasonal modifiers, so invisible enemies for example, they're not included in Grandmasters. So we've updated our patch notes to reflect this and with that said, we highly recommend using some elemental damage resist mods on your chest piece as you build craft for that difficulty. So there has been a little bit of confusion and a lot of feedback about the acute burns in the Grandmaster Nightfalls this week. But let me know down in the comments what you think of those changes to Grandmaster Nightfalls. Well, let's look at the seasonal challenges in week 8 of Season of the Risen. So we've got some new weekly challenges as always. So week 8, we've got 5 overall. So first of all, we've got Crushed Spirits. Prevent Lucent Hive from resurrecting by crushing their ghosts. We've got the Vow of the Disciple Challenge. So complete any Vow of the Disciple Raid Challenge in Savathun's Throne World and acquire a Raid Weapon Recipe. So that's good. They are incentivizing the challenges in the raid. Then we've got Pinnacles. So reach the power level 1560 by earning Pinnacle Rewards. Then we've got Seasonal Calibration. So calibrate Glaives. Hand Cannons and Rocket Launchers. And bonus progress awarded for Glaive use and defeating Guardians 2. And then we've got Serpentine Skin. So acquire the Serpentine Skin Ornament for Reckless Endangerment. So that's really, really good stuff for week 8 of the Seasonal Challenges. Well, in terms of Crucible next week, so we've got the Rotating Playlist. And that one is going to be Team Scorched. And that is kind of a crazy playlist, so if you're looking for a bit of Team Scorch next week, is a good time to dive in. And of course in Crucible next week, we've got Iron Banner returning, as I did mention before. And because Iron Banner is returning, we've got no Trials of Osiris. So when Iron Banner is around, that means it's a weekend off for Trials of Osiris. So that is going to be back the weekend after, and that will return on the 22nd of April, 2022. Well, next up, let's have a look at some of the Eververse Bright Dust items for next week, from the 12th until the 19th of April. So first of all, we've got the Tequili Lee, and that is an ornament for Star Eater Scales. That's going to cost you 1,500 Bright Dust. We've got the Terminus Emissary, so that's an ornament for the Curious the Falling Star. That's for the Titans, of course, that again, 1,500 Bright Dust. We've got the Homespun Boots, and they are for the Boots of the Assembler. That is an ornament for the Warlocks. Again, 1,500 Bright Dust. And then we've got the Rover Shell. That is an exotic ghost shell. That is 2,850 Bright Dust. We've got Prometheus OSP. That's an exotic ship. That is 2,000 Bright Dust. We've also got the Celestial Kestrel. That is another exotic ship. Again, that is 2,000 Bright Dust. We've got the E99 Shell. That is an exotic ghost. And that one is 2,850 Bright Dust. And that is around just in time for Easter. That with it being shaped like an egg. Then we've got the 5P3AR, that is an exotic sparrow. Again, that's 2,500 Bright Dust. And then we've got the Workout Dance, that is a legendary emote, that is 700 Bright Dust. And finally, we've got the Infinity Cubes, that is a legendary emote, again, 700 Bright Dust. And that is it for the Eververse Bright Dust items next week in Destiny 2. Well, big thanks to todayindestiny.com for that data here. And make sure you go over there and check out their amazing website. I use it on a daily basis. Really, really good, and I'll link it down below in the description so it's nice and easy so you can get it. Well, next up, we've got a free emblem code. So this is the Crushed Gamma emblem code, and this is all to do with our place on Reddit last week, and you can go and read the entire write-up in the This Week at Bungie over on Bungie.net, but I'm just going to give you the code. I'm going to show you what the emblem looks like. All you have to do is put this code into the Bungie website over on the Redeem page, and again, I'll link that down in the description, and you will get a nice new free emblem from Bungie. And this one looks really, really cool. Finally, a little bit of news. So we've got the Mechs vs. Monsters vote. Don't forget, we've got that vote, and it's going on at the minute. And this is to help decide which armor set is going to be built for Festival of the Lost coming in fall 2022. So emails have gone out from Bungie. So do make sure to check, and it's always worth checking your spam folder if you can't see the email. So click on the image in the email, and your vote will be added to the count. And personally, I went for Team Monsters. Well, let me know what you think about next week in Destiny 2 in the comments. And as I mentioned before, this is a new video series. So I do intend to do this once every week, probably on a Saturday. 
to give you a complete rundown of what's coming next week in Destiny 2, so I'd love to hear what you think. Well, that is it for this guide on what's going on next week in Destiny 2, and as always, thank you so much for watching. For more Destiny 2 content like this, hit that subscribe button down below and subscribe to This Week in Video Games. Or you can check me out on Twitter at TWIVG Podcast. If you enjoyed this video, found it useful, liking and sharing the video would really help me out. Otherwise, check out the other videos on the channel. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon.